Well, tonight, I want to just say a prayer before you, before we get started. Father, we thank you for this day which you have made. Lord, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you right now. We take authority over the devil and all demonic forces and bold declare that no weapon formed against this service shall prosper. We thank you, Lord, for the hearers, Lord, of, of your word, Lord, that will be doers of your word, and they will not fall into deception. We give you all honor, glory, and praise with adoration and thanksgiving for all that's been said, wrought, little manifested to your glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. That's right. Amen. Well, tonight's message is called Faith That Moves Mountains. <laughs> That's right. Faith that moves mountains. In fact, say that with me. Say faith that moves mountains. So when you think about mountains, you got to think about um, the Alleghenies up in Pennsylvania. Think about the Colorado Mountains out west. You know, think about Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. What about Mount Eagle in Tennessee? But hey, guess what? Here in our own lovely, lovely state of Georgia, we have Stone Mountain. So I've given you some examples of some mountains. So when you're thinking about faith that moves mountains, I want you to think about that. Think about faith. We're going to talk about faith and what faith is. See the word moves. Tell it where to go. And a mountain. That's right. An object lesson today. So those are some of the examples I'll give you as it relates to mountains. So my question to you tonight is, how can you move a mountain? You may be asking yourself that right now. How, uh, Minister Cora, how can I move a mountain? Good question. And then you say this right here. Do you have the faith that can move mountains? That's right. Some of y'all invariably saying to yourself, do I have faith that can move mountains? And then some, some kids are saying, hey, Minister Court, what exactly is a mountain? It's not a molehill. That's right. It's not a valley. It's a mountain. So we're going to talk about that. What exactly is a mountain? So when we define our sources here, our terms, a mountain is a large natural elevation of the earth's surface rising abruptly, that's right, from the surrounding levels. That's right, let's read it one more time. A mountain is, that's right, according to its definition here, it's a large natural elevation of the earth's surface rising abruptly, key word, abruptly. That's right, from the surrounding uh, so, uh, level, that's right, that's where it's located. So when you think about it, just think about for yourself for a minute. There's a level surface. Then all of a sudden, somewhere in that level surface, a, a object appears, a rock. It keeps growing, keeps growing, it keeps growing. Guess what? That's a mountain. That's right. So a mountain can form anywhere at any time. Thus, our two text uh, scriptures for tonight will be found in number one, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and also in Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. So let's read Mark chapter 11, verse 23 first. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, there's that word, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said, or she said, or he said, a boy or girl, that's right, man or woman, said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So let's look at that again. For verily, the word verily means truly, truly, truly I say unto you, that whosoever, I am so glad they didn't put a name there because you'll be focused on the name. You say, you know, if um, John Doe said, or if Jane Doe said, no, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, you've got to open up your mouth and speak to the mountain. Be thou removed. That's why we're talking about faith that moves mountains. Tell your mountain, be thou removed. Mountain, move. Mountain, get out of the way. And you got to tell it where to go. Be thou cast into the sea. Give it a place to go. See, a sea is big enough for a mountain to go into. That's right. So tell whatever mountains in your life, tell it where to go. That's right. Give it a destination. And shall not doubt in his heart. You can't doubt. If you got faith, you can't have faith and doubt at the same time. There's two, it's, they're, they're two opposites. They're two polars. Guess what? You got to say, you know what? I have faith and I don't have fear. I don't have doubt because I have faith. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That's right. So what you say and what you believe can make a difference in your life. So our second scripture says this right here in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 through 21. And it says this right here. That's right. Go ahead and turn there to turn there. Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. If you have it, say amen. Amen. That's right. So. If we look over here in Matthew chapter 17, it's, and Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to a yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. How about that? 
you got to know that when God says you've got to have faith and you can't have unbelief. He said, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, that's like if you go to the ocean and you see all those grains of sand on the ocean, think about a mustard seed about that size. About that size. And he said, if you have a grain of faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Get to a place. That's right. And don't doubt in your heart because nothing shall be impossible. So what is faith? Very good question. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. That's right. Scroll there on your, on your tablet, on your phone, or if you got your Bible out, flip those pages. I hear those pages turning. That's right. Amen. So we're going to go over to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. One more time. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things you don't yet see. So hope, when we see the word hope, we see hope is a feeling of an expectation or desire. <laughs> when I see the word desire, I think about the Bible says, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe you shall receive them and you shall have them. Also think of one of my favorite books called Think and Grow Rich. <laughs> desire. You got to have a desire. The word substance, it is a physical matter from, from which something is made which has a discrete existence. Once again, a substance. It is a physical matter from which something is made which has a discrete existence. So the, the faith says again, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things you don't yet see. So question, do we all have faith? Good question. The answer is yes, we do. How do we know that? Let's go back to our Bible. That's right. Let's go over to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. That's right, Romans chapter 12, verse 3. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. All right, here we go. It says this right here. For I say that through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself or herself highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That's right. God has given every man the measure of faith. That's right. Do you believe that? That's right. He sure did. And he says this right in the New Living Translation. It says this right here. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given to us. That's right. So, so to answer your question, does everybody have faith? Of course we do, because God, the Bible says in the book of Romans, Paul wrote it, you know, emphatically says God has dealt every man the measure of faith. We're talking about faith that moves mountains. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Well, praise good. Praise God. Now, when you're dealing with faith moving mountains or mountain moving faith, there are some things that you cannot say. You can't be in contrary to what, you're, what God says. You can't, you can't contradict the word. You can't say things like, it won't happen. You ever said that before? It won't happen? But guess what? It can happen. That's right. Thinking the opposite. You can't say to yourself, I can't see myself doing this. I can't see myself taking this vacation. I can't see myself driving this car. I can't see myself living in this subdivision. I can't see. You know, it's almost like you're talking with your eyes closed. But what happens when you open your eyes? You know what? You can see. What happens when the scales fall off your eyes? Guess what? You can see. You can't say, I can't see. I cannot see. You got to say, I can see. Think about the little uh, choo-choo train, the little engine said, I think I can. He didn't say, I think I can. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have never tried. He would have never started the engine. He said, I think I can. And then he said it, and then he backed up with by doing it. And next thing you know, he said, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And got to the top of the mountain. Do you know what he said on the, on the other side of the mountain? <laughs> I'm going to give you a little, little insight. He said, I knew I could. I knew I could. I knew I could. That's right. He started with, I think I can. And then he said, I knew I could. Because guess what? It started with the way he thought. Can I get an amen? That's right. Or say, oh, me. If you say, you know what? I'm guilty of that. Say, oh, me. Oh, my. But say, amen, which means so be it unto me. And also, you can't say this right here. It will always be this way. You've heard some people say it before. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Guess what? Sometimes you got to break it. Even Jesus came in, you know, broke, you know, broke, tore down the temple and said in three days, I'll, I'll, I'll rebuild it. So guess what? Sometimes in life, some things got to be broken in order to be fixed. You've got to break some things down in order to fix it back up and make it better. Everybody say, make it better. That's right. Amen. You can't say this. Nothing good ever happened to me. You can't say that. See, we're saying what you can't say. If you're going to have faith that moves mountains in your life, 
And we're going to talk about, we're going to give you some examples of some mountains that may come in your life. You can't say certain things. Do you know that Proverbs 18, 21 says that both death and life are in the power of your tongue, my tongue, our tongues? We got to be very aware, very aware and, and, and conscientious of what we are releasing out of our mouth. Now, if we're going to do that, we got to be very conscientious of what we're thinking in our minds thinking in our heart because the Bible still says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you say something out of your mouth, it's only reflected what's in your heart, which also reflected what's in your mind. So be careful what you're thinking. Change your thoughts. Even Jesus came to repent. His, his message was repent, which means to change the way you think. Change your mind. Can I get an amen? You can't say this right here. Nothing will ever come my way. You know, I mean, you can't say nothing going to come my way because guess what? It's coming your way. You can't say certain things if you expect certain things, you know, expect, expect positive. You can't say something negative if you're expecting something positive. If you're going to say, if you got to speak positive and, and, and expect something positive, and guess what? You will achieve a positive result. So we're dealing with some things you can't do and some things you can't say if you're going to be, be, be in a place to move mountains. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So if you're going to move the mountains that suddenly appear in your life, you're going to have to have several things. Number one, you got to have a desire. Everybody say desire. Number two, you got to pray. That's right. You got to commune with God. You got to talk to God and let God talk back to you. But sometimes when you're praying, do you know what? You got to read your word, pray to God, and then I believe you need to have a space of silence to allow God to come back and talk to you. You got to believe into the future. Hey, that's what faith is all about, believing into the future. Because when you, when you dare believe into the future, you know what? You're daring to believe God. Because the Bible says also in, in the book of Hebrews that without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's right, Hebrews 11, 6. And then number four, you, we're talking about, you know, having faith that moves mountains, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be able to thank God ahead of time for the manifestation. That's right. The one with issue of blood, she said, if I could just get to Jesus, I shall be made whole. You know what? She didn't say I will be um, half whole, that, you know, 50 percent, 25 percent or a tenth or 10 percent. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. That's right. I shall be made whole. If you can say those things, say what Jesus says. Say what the people in the Bible said that got the results that they got. Because Jesus said, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Can I get an amen? So these are some of the reasons some mountains don't get moved. Like we talked about some earlier, you know, out of your life. Number one, fail to believe in God's word. <laughs> you know, if you don't believe in God's word, what are you believing in? That's right. Hebrews 11 and 6 says again that, that he that cometh to God must believe. Believe what? Believe that he's God. Come to God what? In prayer. Believe that he's God. And also that he's a rewarder. That's right. A rewarder. You know, a lot of people say God did this to somebody. God did that. No, God does not do that. John 10, 10, the divided line of scripture said, but the thief coming not, but, but to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, that's the thief. That's, 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 he's, on, he's, on, he's on offense. On defense. But Jesus said, but I am come. That's right, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. See, on one side, the thief come for one reason. On the other side, Jesus come for this, came for this very reason. Can I get an amen? Amen. Number two, some of the reasons why some mountains don't get removed out of your life. Saying the wrong things. You've got to learn to say what Jesus says. That's right. You know, years ago, our pastor did a message called, Is Your Tongue Healthy? That's right. You've got to evaluate your tongue. Because your tongue, the Bible says, is an unruly evil. No man can tame it. But your tongue will only say what's in your heart. He also did a message years ago called Matters of the Heart. When you learn to evaluate your heart, evaluate the way you think, your tongue, you can control your tongue. Can I get an amen? Number two, saying the wrong things. All right, we talked about that. Is your tongue healthy? Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Um, number three, unforgiveness. All right, you cannot expect to mountains be removed out of your life if you're harboring unforgiveness. Do you believe, do you know what? Unforgiveness can be a mountain. That's right. You've got to learn, take that unforgiveness out of your heart. Take that heart of stone out of your heart. And say, so, you know, and replace it with something pliable and moldable, something that God can use. So we go over to Mark chapter 11. Let's go over to Mark chapter 11. You know, praise the Lord. That's one of my favorite books of the Bible. Amen. Mark chapter 11. And we're going to look at verse 20. Let's go down to verse 25. Verse 25. See, everybody... Everybody want to go, everybody want a present at Christmas time, 
but nobody want to do right, all right? You got to be able to do right in order to receive from God what is right and what is considered righteousness in his sight. So verse 25 says this right here. When you stand praying, oh, we got to pray, saints, believers. We got to pray. The Bible said pray without ceasing. Forgive if you have ought against any that your father, which is in heaven, that's right, God is in heaven, Jesus is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. That's how it works. Forgive, and, it shall, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given. That's right. Breathe in, and then breathe out. You know, that's how oxygen flows. There's always a process to everything that happens in this, in this thing called life that God has given us. Can I get an amen? But verse 26 says this right here. But if you do not forgive, that's right, if this will happen if the converse is true, if you don't do this, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you of your trespasses. See how it works? Forgive your neighbor. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love your neighbor, how can you love yourself? If you don't forgive your neighbor, how do you expect God to forgive you? If, if, if you don't forgive, if you don't have, if you're harboring unforgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, that is a mountain in your life. That's right. The Bible says you tell that mountain to be removed. Tell that heart, the heart of stone to be removed. Replace it with a heart of love and kindness. See, the world needs more love, not more hate. You know, somebody cut you off in traffic, you don't need to give them, you know, um, one of your five fingers. You know, you need to see, you know what, you need to pray for that person. You know, because down the road, there's probably a police officer waiting to pull that person over. That's right. Can I get an amen? So don't do what the devil expects you to do. Do what God expects you to do. Can I get an amen? Number four, that's right. We're talking about some of the things, some of the reasons why some mountains don't move out of your life. Wrong relationships. That's right. Wrong company. Wrong friends. This, this happens. Being around the wrong people will cause you to forget who you are and whose you are. That's right. And number five, failure to pray. I call it FTP. Failure to pray. I believe in using acronyms, ladies and gentlemen. When you fail to pray, according to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, let's, let's back right. We're, we're still in Mark eleven twenty four, 24. Mark chapter 11. Let's back up to verse 24. It says, therefore, I say unto you, what thing soever you desire. This is Jesus talking because it's written in red. Therefore, whatsoever things you desire, where's your desire located? Inside your prayer. When you pray, believe that you shall receive them. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You shall have them, boys and girls. That's right. You believe you shall receive them, though desires on your heart, though desires that you have on that list, hey, you know what, at Christmas time or any other time, guess what? Those are your desires. Can I get an amen? Amen. So number four, we said wrong relationship. Number five, failure to pray. And also, if we go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14, you know what the Bible says, if my people, are you guys people, which are called by my name, uh, the name of Jesus Christ, shall humble themselves. You got to come to a place of humility. You can't exalt yourself. You shall be humbled if you exalt yourself. That's right. Shall humble themselves and pray. That's right. There's that word prayer again. Failure to pray. You, can, you got to pray. And seek my face. That's right. Where is his faith? That's right. In prayer. In the word of God, being around other believers. That's right. And pray and seek my face and turn. Uh, let's do a turnaround from their wicked ways. You just can't turn halfway. In fact, you can't do a 360 degree turn. You got to face, you got to turn from your wicked ways. If your wicked ways this way, turn this way. And guess what? You have turned your back on your wicked ways. Seek my face. Turn from the wicked ways. The Bible says, then and only then will I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. Can I get an amen? If you want your land healed, do what the Bible says. Amen. Here are some examples of some mountains, and you may identify with this. Does anybody there, you know, I know it don't happen to you. You know, we've all, you know, we're, we're going to play this role for a minute, right? But if it does, identify with it. A mountain of debt. That's right. Have you ever had a mountain of debt? Debt so high that you can't get over it? Debt so wide that you can't get around it? But guess what? God says, guess what? You can say to that mountain, be thou removed. That's right, according to Mark chapter 11, verse 23, until it be cast into the sea, and don't doubt in the heart. That's right, the sea of forgetfulness. That's right. So when God allow you to cast that debt into the sea of forgetfulness, don't go back and get in debt again. <laughs> you don't want to do a circular motion in the things of debt, all right? If God, the Bible says, whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. So when Jesus faced a situation called debt, him and Peter went fishing. You know, they, they said... Hey, Peter, do not your master pay tribute? And we're talking about in Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. You know, and then he says, the taxes. Does your master not pay tribute, you know, to Caesar? You know, but Jesus prevented him. When he came to Jesus, he said, Jesus knew what, who was at the door. You know, that's before we had, you know, um, the ring doorbell. <laughs> Jesus already knew. In fact, Jesus was before ring doorbell. 
He saw them coming. That's right. God is the Spirit. That's right. Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God saw it coming. That's right. So he prevented him saying, go fishing. Cast a hook. We got any fishermen out there who love to fish? I don't know if you like deep sea fishing, you know. If you like, you know, fresh water or salt water, it doesn't matter. Jesus said, go fishing. He said, the, the, the fish that first cometh up. That's right. You're going to find some money in his mouth. Take that coin and pay for me and for thee. You know what? God got a, God, God got a solution for you as it relates to debt. Guess what? He'll say, you know what? Go fishing. That's right. When you're fishing, and all fishermen can relate to this, when you're fishing, sometimes fish don't bite immediately. Sometimes you have to wait for the right time. But guess what? When that, when that, when that fish gets on that hook, your line starts moving. And when your line starts moving, go ahead and pick up, pick up your pole and start reeling them in. And when you feel like a little certain snatch, guess what? He done got hooked on the, he's hooked on the line. And reel them on in. And when you reel them on in, guess what? <laughs> There's going to be a fish on that hook. You don't know it's going to be a bass, a tarpon. Oh, well, I don't know what it is. But guess what? It's going to be a, mighty, a fish with a mighty big coin to take care of your mountain of debt. Can I get an amen? Here's another um, a mountain. Sickness. That's right. Sickness can be a mountain. That's right. The woman with the issue of blood, she had that issue for 12 years. But she said, you know what? This is what she said. If I could just get to Jesus, I shall be made whole. Guess what? She got to Jesus, and she was made whole. Can I get an amen? Another uh, mountain could be unemployment. You know, you say, I've been trying, I've been applying, I'm applying for a job, Mr. Corey, but it seems like doors are closing. You know, they I go online, they say over 200 applicants have applied for this job. But God, that's right, God is faithful to that promise. Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Obey his prophets, so shall you prosper. Get into a place where you hear the word of God, so a word can come to you to go to that place that God has desired for you to be. And guess what? There is a job awaiting <laughs> your arrival at 8.30 in the morning. Can I get an amen? Your thoughts can be a mountain. That's right. Let's go over to Jeremiah uh, chapter 29, verse 11. All right. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. All right. You all enjoying this? As our uh, first lady always says, it's mm -mm good. That's right. It's good. Amen. All right. Jeremiah 29, 11. When you're there, say amen. Amen. Let's read what the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. God, pastor always teaches us, know what's being said, to whom and who to whom is being said. That's right. What's being said, to who's being said, and who's saying it. That's right, those three things. So it says, say it the Lord, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. What's the first thought? Thoughts of peace. You need some peace today. You know, Jerusalem needs some peace. Israel needs some peace today. America needs some peace today. We need peace over this whole globe. We, this globe needs to be doused with peace. Because Jesus, God said, God is Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. Can I get an amen? Say, God is our peace. Say, God is my peace. So I, I say, I speak peace over my mountain today. Say, I tell my mountain to be removed, to be cast into the sea. Say, I don't doubt in my heart. Say, but I believe that whatever I say shall come to pass. I shall have whatsoever I say. Can I get an amen? That's right. So we say right here in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil. See, on one side is peace. Other side is evil. See, God wants good things to happen to us, not bad things. The Bible says to give you an expected end. What are you expecting today? We talked about faith. We talked about hope. We talked about substance. Faith, the substance thing, hope for the evidence of things not seen. What is your expectation from God? That's right. You shall receive it. Another, another um, mountain, another example of mountain could be a mountain of fear. That's right. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. That's right. But it manifests in a body. Don't let it manifest in your body. Let faith manifest in your body. God has not given a spirit of fear, but of power. Uh, say everybody say power. Love. Everybody say love. And number three, everybody say a sound mind. So once again, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Can I get an amen? Another mountain can beat us right here. The mountain called pride. Everybody say pride. That's right. You know, in the book of Proverbs, you know, God hates seven things. I mean, six things and seven is abomination to the Lord. In that, in that chapter, in that, um, in Proverbs chapter six, it talked about a proud look. That's right. Pride does come before the fall. That's right. Humble yourself. Pastor always talk about the pH, you know, pH balance. Pride and humility. Have a, have a right amount of pride. Have a right amount of humility. That's that, that's that true pH balance. Can I get an amen? Amen. Are y'all enjoying this? I know I am. Well, praise God. The word is mm-mm good. <laughs> How about that? 
We're talking about faith that moves mountains. We're talking about mountain moving faith. So faith is, that's right, the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things we don't yet see. That's right. So the measure of, of faith given by God is not small or great or can be measured by our standards. Because we cannot quantify it, God made us. We didn't make ourselves. So let's go back um, and read again, you know, our text for today. We're talking about mountain moving faith. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11. We're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for, for riding. Keep your seatbelt fastened. We're getting ready, you know, like on a plane. You, you know, anybody ever taken a plane besides myself? Guess what? So you take off, but before we take off, you got to have your seatbelts buckled. You got to have your seat in the upright position. And guess what? As it takes off, you go to a certain level. And we're moving probably at, a, at about 30, 30 we're at 30,000 feet, maybe 35,000 feet. Moving about 600 miles an hour, maybe 500 miles an hour. But guess what? Now we're getting ready to land. Everybody say land. And because we're getting ready to land, the same thing you did when you took off, you got to do the same thing, get ready to land. Bring your seats forward, put your trade table up. That's right. And keep your seat belts buckled. Can I get an amen? That's right. We're getting ready to land. Amen. So let's go back to Mark chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 22. Amen? Amen. And Jesus answered them and said, have faith in God. We're talking about faith that moves mountains. And Jesus answered, a lot of times you may have questions out there, ladies and gentlemen, and you know what, but Jesus is the answer. You've heard that song a long time ago. Jesus is the answer for the world today. That's right. Jesus is the answer. That's right. So whatever questions, whatever problems, whatever situations, you know what, we, today we call it issues. Whatever issues you have, guess what? Jesus is the answer. So in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, it says, and Jesus answered them. More than one person had a question in their heart. How many of y'all got questions in your heart about mountain moving faith? You, do you doubt that God can do it? Do you doubt God is not able? See, my Bible, which should be your Bible, says that God is not only able, but he will deliver us out of this fiery furnace. That's right. We're talking about the three Hebrew boys. Remember that story? You've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's right. Beyond a reasonable doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that God is faithful to that promise, that God will do what he said he's going to do, that God is Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider, that, Je that God is Jehovah Sikhanu. He is your righteousness, that God is Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace, that God is Jehovah Nisi. He is your banner. And yes, the banner over you, the victory over you is love. That's right. When the enemy comes in like a flood or like a mountain, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against him or her. Do you know God has God operates according to a standard? So should you. God said, you know what? If you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall come to know the truth and the truth that you've come to know by spending time with me shall make you free. That's right. Free from any mountain. See, you know what? Years ago, I heard a song that says, Lord, you ain't got to move the mountain. But give me the strength to climb. God has not called us, according to scriptures, to climb any mountain. Here in this text, and we're going to read the next verse, behind verse 22. Jesus first said in 22, have faith in God. Jesus did not say, get ready to climb a mountain. He did not say, get ready to, you know, avoid the mountain. Jesus did not say, hey, don't, don't deny the mountain exists. But this is what Jesus says. For verily I say unto you, this is the power of God talking to you. When God is talking to you, he is downloading his power into you. He's downloading his ability in, into you. You know the scripture. Let your will be done on earth as it's already been done in heaven. That's right. Whatever's bound on, in heaven is bound here on earth. Whatever we loose in heaven is loose here on earth. It's the principle of binding and loosening. When you learn to loose those mountains and you learn to know that it's been loosed in heaven, and you learn to bind that mountain and know that's been bound in heaven. Guess what? Whom the sun sets free. Free from what? Any mountain is free indeed. When you learn to say what Jesus says and allow the power of God to work inside you, we're talking about Holy Ghost power. We're talking about power that's, that's bigger than any power, be it nuclear, be it any type of energy, be it whatever. You know, God made the sun. The sun didn't make God, all right? So if, 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 God, if God is our source, and he give us resources. Don't you go up there and create an idol and, and, and um, worship the resource. Go to the source. That's right. Back in school, you know, we had um, do research. You know, we had to, you had a, had a table of contents. And at the very end, you know, we had a work cited page, you know, reference page. 
we have to give credit to the source. If I take credit or take um, or, or assume that it was me that did this, no, it ain't me, it's God. Give credit back to the source. Just like the woman with the, with the issue of blood. She gave credit, but she, daughter, Jesus said, daughter, we said, well, who did this? He said it was me. Jesus already knew that. The Bible said we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. When you understand that, you, that you, you've, it's already been overcame, the battle's already been fought, the victory's already been won, guess what? You're made better by it. But then God says, you know what? Speak the word. Overcome by the blood of the lamb, one, and the word of our testimony, number two. You got to give a test of morning to the test that you just went through. Once you begin to testify and share with others what God has done in your life, you know what? It not only builds your faith up. Like David says, he delivered me out of the paw of the lion. He delivered me from the paw of the bear. David be the lion? David be the bear? And he said, Goliath, this uncircumcised Philistine, should be just like them. Defeated. Can I get an amen? That's right. They're defeated, not you, because you're a winner, a winner in Christ. Amen. Hey, we're having a great time on this Wednesday night Bible study. Call it Winning Wednesday. Hey, amen. Praise God. And hey, we thank God for our pastor. But let's go back to the scripture. We're almost done. We're almost finished, ladies and gentlemen. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Tell your mountain to get out the way. Be thou cast into the sea. Tell it where to go. You know, you take your wallet out. You know, I take my wallet out. You speak to your wallet. Say, say, you, you say, money coming unto me now. In Jesus' name, you got to speak to an eminent objects and tell where, what's coming. All right? If you got debt, you talk to that debt. You got a list of debt. You speak to that debt. You hold that debt up as a list and say, you know what? One through ten. By the end of this year, you're going to be gone. You're going to be dissipated. You're going to be annihilated. You're going to be destroyed. You're going to be brought to oblivion because God has not given me the spirit to feel but the power level of a sound mind. And I call me, myself out of debt. I call you out of debt. And we're debt free in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Amen. And let's finish this scripture. But believe, but, but, but thou, be thou removed. And be, we're talking to, talking to the mountain. Be thou removed, mountain, and be cast to the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass. Guess what? <laughs> he shall have whatsoever he said. That's right. And the Bible tells us that we can have what we say. Today we're talking about mountain moving faith. We're talking about faith that moves mountain. And right there where you are, I mean, I want you to just admit to yourself, I mean, right now, whatever mountain's in your life, you know, make a list of them. And guess what? I want you to take that list before the throne of God, bring it to the, bring it to, make it have an altar at your house. Go to the altar, you know, and go to your man and woman of God and hey, provide a sacrifice. God said God will manifest himself around a sacrifice. When you make a sacrifice, guess what? God will be a, make, be a blessing to you right there. Can I get an amen? So today I want you to be blessed knowing that you have faith in God because God has given everybody the measure of faith. I don't know how big that measure was, how small that measure was, but you have, you have that measure. But you take that measure and you work out that measure just like you go to the gym, you work out. You know what? You work out. You, work, you want to get stronger, not weaker. You don't go to the gym to get weaker. You go to the gym to get stronger. And as you get stronger and stronger and working out in the gym, and as you come and read your Bible, you get stronger in faith. As you come to church, you know, be around other believers, and, you know, through the, you know, through the law of synergy, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, Christians hang with Christians. Non-Christians hang with non-Christians. But guess what? If you're not a Christian today, you can become a Christian, and I'm going to lead you into salvation. But I believe that birds of a feather do flock together. Eagles fly with eagles, chickens pick with chickens. Be careful who you surround yourself with. That's one of the problems why some people's mouths not moving. They surround themselves with unbelievers. People that say, you know what, I don't think I can fly. You know, or do you think you can fly? You know, if you're an eagle, you know you can fly. God has given us wings. Guess what? We can fly. Can I get an amen? And I want to let you know that today you have mountain moving faith. You have, the, you have enough faith. God has given everybody a measure of faith. And you can move any mountain out your, out your life today. So right there where you are, I want you to peer up to me and say, today is the first day of the rest of my life. Say, I have mountain moving faith. Say, any mountain in my life, I command it in the name of Jesus to move. Say, I command it to be cast into the sea. Say, I don't doubt in my heart, but I believe. That's right, point to yourself. Say, I believe that whatever I say, point to your mouth. Say, it shall come to pass. Say, I shall have whatsoever I say. And say, say, today I am free because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Give God a great big hand. And right, right now, thank God that you 
have mountain moving faith, you have enough faith to move in the mountain. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his word. Mountain moving faith. Amen. And right there, if you if you, if if you if you're watching this broadcast right now, I don't know where you are. You could be in your car, you know, on your phone or your smart device. You could be, um, you know, at home watching on television. I don't care, know where you are, but God knows where you are because He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. That's right. The Spirit of God is everywhere. That's right. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards Him. And right now, I want to pray with you. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you right now. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the, for, the, for the listeners. We thank you for the viewers right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, we thank you for those who want to know you in a more, in a more perfect way. And right now, according to uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, Lord, you said in your word, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So right there, if you're in, you're in, uh, in video land, I want you to just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of any dead work in my life. Say, I ask you to come into my heart. So I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I, as a result, I am saved. And I believe it. And I say it in Jesus' name. Be it unto me. I am saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's right. If you prayed that prayer, guess what? We believe that you are in the family. That's right. And you are now a believer. And now you can continue walking in, on your, in your walk, your Christian walk. That's right. And do the things that God expects you to do, such as pray, come to church, you know, find your man or woman of God. If you're looking for a church home, you want to look any further. Guess what? You have found the right place at the right time. The Body of Christ Church International USA, while pastor preaches the uncompromised word of God without fear, favor, or respect of person. He hears from God. And guess what? You want to be in a place like the children of Israel when they were under Moses. Come on. When God talked to Moses, Moses brought the word to the people. God talks to our pastor and pastor bring the word to us. And guess what? As a result, we eat the manna from heaven. Can I get an amen? And that's right. And if you're, if you're on there, you want to be filled with God's Holy Spirit, I believe that God will fill you with his Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Amen.